Hello and welcome to Intergrace Senior Ministries. I'm Debbie Bergio. Have you ever moved? Have you ever tried to downsize? It can be overwhelming and very stressful. Today we are joined by Ryan Burns from Stress-Free Solutions. What a perfect name for such a stressful situation. Hi Ryan, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, thanks for having me. So as I was thinking, moving is stressful and Stress-Free Solutions is the perfect name for a, a company who wants to take that stress away. So can you tell us about what you do and all the services you should provide? Yeah, and um, yeah, Stress-Free is always uh, for the clients. You know, I obviously, uh, I take the stress on myself, probably why I lost my hair early on. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um, what we do as a company is um, we really help people in those hard times where it's, um, you know, I've lived in my house for 50 years and we have to move a parent or they themselves need to move. And a lot of times they don't even want to move. It's kind of a necessity where there's a million items in the house. You know, there's everything from old china cabinets to extra beds. But really what we do is we actually pare it down to needs and wants. So what we go is we go through step by step, help you sort what, what's going to go to the kids, what's going to go to the new home, what is that need, um, help you do a floor plan of the new home, and then we go through and we actually pack those things, the new home, we do the moving, and then we unpack fully. So we make the bed, we put the dishes away, you know, we make sure, you know, if you've got 15 sets of dishes, maybe it's time to go down to one, you know, help you really make those, you know, those decisions and then not be living in a furniture store or, a, or we call Box Mountain at the new place and then have to spend six months unpacking. So um, then the rest of the stuff that we don't take, we'll help you to donate, to get the donation, we'll do the uh, online auction, we'll deliver it to the kids. And then if you're selling your house, we'll come in and fully uh, sweep it clean and do the, you know, if there is, um, junk calling or things that needed, we'll do that as well. Wow, I had I really had no idea about the extent of the services. That's fantastic. No. We we just went through um, clearing out my mom's apartment mm -hmm. and um, all that the sorting and everything. But to have someone right. come in and help you out, so you go you find out the floor plan of the new place mm -hmm. and then help them decide and arrange and all of those things. Yeah. So a lot of times, what what happens is. Um, they, they, they want to keep everything because they're, mm. they're really attached emotionally to the items. It could have been me and my husband went and bought that coffee table together and they might not be attached to the coffee table, but they're attached to the memory of the coffee table and what that represents. So going through and actually making them safe at the new place is number one, first priority. So they're not tripping over extra, you know, coffee tables, rugs. They're not trying to take a, a a walker or a wheelchair and squeeze in places, you know, because they wanted to take all this furniture. So number one is, is being safe. And then from there, when I say the once, we go to the once. So what, so do you want the curio cabinet or the china cabinet? One will fit, but what do you want more? Because it's, it's not a necessity to live there, but they want to make it feel like home because this is their, this is their new home and their new, the next step and they're, they're transitioning to the new place. So it's all just, it's really sitting with them. And sometimes we have clients that it's two years. They go, I want to get my basement just done. I'm, there's so much stuff down there. I want to get it organized. Then I want to do the attic. And then I want to do the storage locker. And then it's a, as a, on a timeline, we help them through that process. Sometimes people will call me on a Monday and they want to move by Friday and do their entire life in a week. <laughs> I ask people, please don't do that to me, but we've done mm. it before. So okay. it's, it just, it makes it harder for them because even when you're going through a process of like, let's say you are selling your house. So you gotta sell your house, decide what you want, do a move, and you try to, they try to cram that all into three days. Like, you know, like, okay, we're gonna close in the morning or a move in the afternoon, and it makes it really tough. So getting people to understand that it's a timeline process and work at their pace, because, it, because you know, we've had jobs where we're sitting there and we come across a bear, and that was their mother's, you know, teddy bear. and they, they start crying and we can't do anything else that day. You know, we can't mm -hmm. make any more decisions and say, hey, how about this uh, mixer? How about this? <laughs> you know, they're, they're so emotionally done for the day that I can't have five guys or five ladies in there asking more questions for them. So, it has, so it's always best to do it in, in pieces um, on, at their pace. I, I love that process that you talk about how you can do one room or one area at a time and then maybe take care of that. And then maybe a few months later, come back and do another area. Yep. That, that's just such a great idea for making that process better. And then you're providing such a service, um, letting them talk about 
why that coffee table was important and maybe they're you help them bring back that memory and mm -hmm. and then make it a them able to be able to part with with yeah. that item and 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 really um throughout that timeline really you're establishing your goals out of front so if your goal is to be at the new place watching tv and you want to do that in six months that's great um but keeping a time because people when you think about moving you're like oh yeah i moved when i was 35 or when i was 15 <laughs> or whatever it may be and you're like i know the process you pack but what happens is is as you gain more stuff this is the first time you've actually gone to a smaller place or it's mm -hmm. the first time where injury or illness has dictated the move. So oh, it's true. so in, instead of waiting for the opportunity to like make those decisions and 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 do it, let's say you have a fall and you're in a and you're in a rehab and you're trying to tell your 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 uh, daughter, hey, I want this piece and that piece, and you're sitting on the phone in rehab because now even with COVID, you can't go visit them that often. So now you're trying to make decisions on your home and you're not even there, and then they're like, well, we got what we think you want there. So it's always best to start early and start often, even if it's um, a situation where uh, we find it all the time where I haven't put my car in the garage in 15 years. I would love to be able to just get the garage done and then go from there. Yeah. That, that is a big goal for a lot of people, mm -hmm. to be able to fit the car in the garage. Yes, it is. A, it is a, it's very freeing when you actually can do it. But sometimes, yeah, you, you know, sometimes it's like, well, things happen and I get more stuff. And, and then people get so... Um, they're emotionally attached to this stuff, but it's also, it weighs on them where they're like, oh, I got to get that storage locker. Like, they might have a storage locker off site that they're paying two, $300 a month for. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I need to go through that. That's my mom's stuff. That's my grandparents' stuff. Have them go through it. Well, we have a, a system where it's, it, you know, we touch it once, Ohio, only handle it once, where you pick it up. <laughs> it's either, it's, a, it's not make one pile into two piles and two into three. It's say, do I need this item? All right, this is the new home box. This is the donation. This is the sell box. This is the kid box, you know, recycling, you know, scrap metal, whatever it may be. It's better to make those decisions. And I like to do it like I'm reading a book. Like if I was doing this kitchen right here, I'd start here and work my way down. I'm not going to, oh, yeah, that's the matching spoon. I think it's over there, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough to do it that way. Uh, I'm sure it is. Yeah, it's uh, Ohio. I I will remember that. That is a great uh, great device to remember. Only handle it once. Okay. And so you mentioned COVID. So I know COVID has had to change what you do tremendously. Uh, Can you tell us about how you worked through that? Yeah, I mean, when when COVID first hit, you know, I mean, even to right now, it's still the unknown. It's like, well, what what do we do? So what we do is like, you know, even for the office. Everyone gets a temperature taken every day. You know, we, we, the trucks get washed out every day. And all the little things that we can do to try to prevent, you know, wearing masks and things. But um, what we also found out is uh, people were holding up and saying, I'm not going to move till next year. Then they're calling us six months later now being like, I wish I should have moved anyways, because now that injury or illness is dictating it. And now it's even harder because we have, we have, we have a client right now that we're working with that is going to be looking through the window while we're inside placing stuff and going here is this is this where you want it like there's like, so we won't oh, we wow. have a floor plan we're putting it in but then it's like they want to sit there in the window and look in because they're not allowed into the place until after it's all placed so it's just little things like that that um and then and it's kind of by design to we do less now because um heaven forbid you know employee gets it or someone's like hey my, my daughter had it so then you know, then we have to reschedule an entire schedule for two weeks or three weeks. Mm -hmm. And then people are like, and, the, and they're, they're, you know, they're expecting us to be there the next day. And if all of a sudden we had to stop right now and say, we have, we're on a two week quarantine. It's a lot more that we have to reschedule that if we just do what we can to get by and, and who knows when this is, you know, I think, um, I think it's changed forever, even with, um, you know, even the flu, you know, Keeping keeping people safe completely at all times is the, is always the priority. But now I think that these these communities, you know, they're they're taking a risk and everyone's taking a, taking the risk. So it's um it's definitely affect the business. I mean, we were there was it was you know kind of like <laughs> you know as a business owner, you're like what are we going to do? And, then, right, and everyone's sure. home, and then and mm -hmm. then you know and try not to like you know the the staff is like I need more hours, and you're like. I don't know. I don't have to tell you. So that's a, it's very tough as a business owner, but it's also really tough. It's the, that, that whole stress. I have more stress every day now 
kind of like you're you're just hoping that like okay hopefully you know is everyone is everyone you know, all the ducks in the yeah. line or you're doing exactly then the news changes and this thing changes and it's really tough but um i think that um it's making businesses that get through this it's making them better and that's that's i think one of the positives i would take from covid sure and i know you've added a new service um through this time uh the auction uh the mm -hmm. you're helping people <laughs> Yeah. to sell some of their, their items. So we, we've always helped them sell items, but we always uh, use a lot of different um, live auctions. But as they stopped, we were kind of in a situation now where what do we do with all this stuff? So we actually are moving into a new uh, warehouse to even have more space to do it, but it's an online online auction. So every okay. Thursday, we're able to sell the stuff for them because even though you know the China cabinet's not worth anything anymore, whatever, whatever the item may be, you know, you still can't just, you know, get rid of it. You know, you can't just be oh, right. you know, this is an item. So, and some things do really well. On the online, we've done really well with like quilts and different things. And what happens is the first time home buyers that never go to the live auctions now sit at home on the computer and can see it. So it's helping because, I mean, some days we'll have three trucks worth of stuff coming out of these houses. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, seven years ago when I was starting this business, you know, Goodwill and Habitat would take everything. And now even their showrooms are full, full. And what do you do with all this extra stuff? So we're trying to sell as much as we possibly can to find it a home. Because even though I hate the word junk hauling, if I can't recycle it, I can't scrap it, and I can't even give it away for free if it's not worth anything, it eventually mm -hmm. has to make it down the line. But uh, we try to avoid that at all costs. I know I have a basement full of my mom's furniture that will go to my daughter someday when she has a home. So oh. I, I just can picture, you know, the, all the things that you probably have on your online auctions. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, so what, so I know we, there are other services in the area that offer similar things mm -hmm. to what you do. So can you, how do you feel what sets you apart? What makes, makes stress I, special? I think our number one thing is, uh, so it would probably be the family approach where we it's it's you know moving is one fifth of what we do like the moving part it's all the move management so you know managing every step of your move so it's helping you with the communication between your your vendors helping you with all the little things and then having the services in house to be able to provide that at a moment's notice where you need the mover you need this taken there you need the delivery here you need someone to sit there with you you want someone to measure your furniture it's taking it all in instead of having to call you know four or five different companies to do this it's really keeping it all as one so you have one person now there's some things that we don't do you know like i really don't like moving pianos so we refer out to a, a good piano mover mm -hmm. and same thing with like uh, grandfather clocks i'll move a grandfather clock but i don't know how they work so you have to have a good person that can tune them up and make them you know tell time again because that is that, you know so there's different things but we also communicate with those different people to help you in the process so it's one less thing you have to worry about on the on the uh, on the back end when you're actually doing the move okay so what that that's great i know pianos and grandfather clocks we've had to move both of those things that they yeah. are extra challenges so what is your area of the region that you serve mostly so our, our home base is in frederick county but uh mm -hmm. we do Frederick, Carroll, Howard, Washington County, and um, most of Montgomery County as well. Okay, great. Um, is Stress Free, is that a, a franchise or are you a standalone? Um, so I started from scratch, uh, wow. standalone. Um, you know, the, 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 the future is, you know, to franchise. But um, for me, it's, uh, you know, it was one day, one day, you know, because my mm -hmm. background, I went to, I went, uh, to Frostburg and did um, entrepreneurship. As, a, as an undergrad and again, you got my MBA. I just love startup businesses. And it was, um, yeah, you know, so to me, it was one of those things where, you know, I really enjoyed what I'm doing. And it's also because I did home care before this, I started working with older adults and with the Alzheimer's Association. And it became almost a, it's like, I get the best of both worlds. I, get, I like the small business world. I also mm -hmm. like helping older adults. So it was, it's able to match both of them up pretty well. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, is there anything else you'd, you'd like to add? I've just enjoyed this conversation yeah. so much. Um, no, I mean, uh, we do a free consultation. Um, so right. because we don't know how much stuff you have and there's you right. know, one, one 900 square foot apartment could have a lot of stuff and a lot of things to go through, or they might only have like three little tables. So um, sure. we, we do a free onsite consultation. And uh, even with Great. COVID, sometimes we'll have to do uh, 
you know, video walkthroughs. If we can't get into mm -hmm. the home, and we'll do what we need to do um, to get by. But um, yeah, we're here. You know, if you need us, let me know. Okay, fantastic, Ryan. Thank you so much. Um, all your contact information, links, and everything are on this page below where the interview is going to be, so, where the interview is. So I just can't thank you enough for being a part of our event oh, and thank you. sharing uh, such a very useful, needed, necessary service for our older adults and our and the children and their children. Yeah. So thank you. Have well, a wonderful thank you. day. Yeah, you too. Thanks.